this is going to be my bottom panel for the bottom of the sideboard. I've already sort of started to fit it. As you can see, I've notched out the corners where the legs are going to go. It's a pretty good fit so far with a little bit of room for the uh, contraction, expansion, all that stuff. And now I'm going to actually start working on getting this to be the thickness I need it to be. And rather than thickness the whole slab, what I'm going to do is since this is going to sit on rails and then it's going to have pieces that brace it over top while still letting it float, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this piece this is about an inch thick, and what I'm going to do is just uh, take down the sides to three quarters of an inch. So this face here is about as flat as I care for it to be. It's pretty flat, it's pretty true. So marking off the front face, which is going to be the reference face now, I'm going to mark the depth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in on the back how wide I need this uh, to be. And then I'm going to basically run a groove or a rabbit all the way around on it. And so then just the edge will be down to thickness and then it'll set in place where it needs to be. I love my Rudo bench. So here's the, here's the side, I've got it all chamfered, I've got everything where I want it to be. I'm gonna set this, this is at three quarters of an inch. And so I'm just gonna, uh, from the front, mark three quarters all the way around. All right, so you might be able to see I have a line. I have a line down from the top, and that's gonna be the final thickness, just of this edge here. So I'm going to flip it over and mark in from the edge or the, excuse me, I'm going to mark in from the edge the width of the rabbit that I want it to be. Now I want to make sure I have room, so I'm going to make it like a one inch wide rabbit. So there we go. And just going to bring it in from all the edges. You might notice that I haven't even taken the time to flatten the bottom anywhere near. It's a little uneven. It just doesn't matter. What I'm doing is I'm essentially using my, my reference face, which is the top that I did flatten, to, to transfer four good edges is all. So that way I don't have to flatten the whole bottom. So that is it. I've got lines all the way around here and here. And uh, now I'm gonna just take my uh, rabbiting plane, my Stanley 78, and bring down the rabbit down to the thickness. Really, I can't put the depth stop. I could, I'm gonna try to put the depth stop, but it's not gonna help me that much. So I'll put it a little shy of what it needs to be, and then I'll just fine tune it from there. So, because I do wanna use my depth stop, I have to actually transfer this to the other side. This is the one reason why a lefty has this is one reason why a lefty might have difficulty with this plane is because you can move the fence over to the side to make it work for a lefty, but you can't move the depth stop. So to transfer the depth stop, what I do, um, to transfer the fence, I just screw it in by hand, and then I have a janky old nail, you know, that'll fit through there, and then I just crank it down a little bit more with the nail. To set the depth, to set the, the fence, I just loose, I loosen the screw on the fence, and I bring it right up to it, and I leave it a little bit shy, because remember that the actual body itself isn't the reference, it's the blade, it's the blade that references. So the depth stop, I'm gonna set it really, really shallow. I don't know, like maybe an eighth of an inch, and go from there. And then remember, you gotta have the blade on the side that's gonna be up against the, the wood, that's going to be cutting the rabbit, you have to have the blade protruding the tiniest little bit, as you can see there. And then, then you're going to start on the back, as you all know. I would say that's a fault with this plane is the non-skewed iron pushes 
can push the shavings straight up into the mouth here, which then clogs it. So. I'm about at there. I'm, I'm about at depth here, which is close, which is good. Pretty close to my line, so I'm gonna keep it. I also think, quite frankly, now that I'm using it, I think my hand is blocking the shaving, so I'm gonna try and keep my hand away. That seems to be helping. All right, so I hit my depth stop all the way down. Just in, and uh, it's at the line here, which is good. It's above the line everywhere else. So I'll have to take that down by hand without the depth stop, but I'll get that in a bit. I'm gonna do the depth, I'm gonna do it, take it down the depth on all the other sides before I adjust anything, then I'll go from there. I can definitely say now that having your hand in the way is a huge factor. This performs much better when I move my hand out of the way. All right, I've got the spur turned out, and I had to reset the depth stop, and I just set it on the groove and reset it that way, like, just set it this. Here, I'll show you. I lifted this up, and then I put the thing in the groove, and just brought it down to the groove, to, to the level there. And you've seen me do this before, so I won't go into much detail, but. So I'm down to depth, and I'm just going to take the block plane and go across the grain, chamfering it a little bit. I don't want this thing to catch up when I'm installing it, so there it is. Definitely happy with that. It even feels consistent, which is good. All right, now on to the other side, and then to fix the, the fix the long sides as well. All right, here's the results. Can you see that I have a groove or I have a rabbit cross? And what this does, it gives me a consistent thickness only on the edge so I can drop it into place without having to, having to flatten the whole slab here, the whole board. And I removed a significant amount, probably in the neighborhood of 3 16 which would have taken quite a bit of time and checking to get this all flat. And so basically all I have to do now is like I said, I just flatten one side and then make sure this drops into place and is flush on the top. Because since the bottom won't be seen, it's gonna be the bottom of the bottom of the dust skirt, so I'm not worried about it. Now just gotta do the final fitting on this and it's ready to go. All right, I dropped it into place. It's about, it needs a little bit of tweaking, not much and uh, it's a little bit too big to use my shooting board on. I've used it, but it's a little big. 
So um, I'm gonna take off maybe like a sixteenth on each edge. You can chin for the back to make sure it doesn't blow out. Now that we've got the bottom ready to go thus for the sideboard, remember that we had this gauge, which I haven't moved, it's three quarters of an inch or so, and that's the exact measurement right there. That's the exact measurement. So to have this sit flush, we have to measure down from the top of this rail here to get our, uh, we have to measure down three quarters of an inch, or this gauge right here. So what I'm gonna do is, got the outside right here, this is the inside, and I'm just gonna run my line on the actual piece on the inside. Again, it's the thickness here. And there's the inside. Now we have ourselves a line. Don't know if you can see it, it's kind of light. I'm gonna actually go ahead and redo it. I'm gonna take this piece here, which is the bottom support, and we're gonna glue it up to that line. Let me redo this line. There we go, much clearer. I'm gonna come back in and darken it with a pencil. All right. So I've marked my out face here. This is the face I want out, of course. And then this is my top face, which is the splattest, squarest face. And then this is, I made sure. And the thing that's critical is that from the top to the part that's gonna be glued, it has to be square. So this is the part that's gonna be glued to the back here, and it's square along its length there. Because if it's tilted out, then that'll cause the shelf support to be tilted one way or the other. So in essence then, it's gonna go like this, right onto here, glued on that line. And that's it. But first, I'm gonna trim it to length. I'm gonna trim it a little bit short. Got about less than an eighth, more than a sixteenth on either end. So yeah, about an eighth actually I'd say on either end. It's gonna actually go just like this. All right, so now it's just the glue. Let's get this out of the way here. I find that if I do a little bit of like rubbing back and forth, almost as if it's a rub joint, it tends to create a suction or something that'll, that holds it a little bit better. It's, it's not entirely critical that this is perfect, that this be perfect because really what's gonna end up happening is uh, if I need to, I can just shave some off the top where it's high. If I want to do it, if it's gonna be anything, it needs to be high. I can always shim it, but I want to avoid shimming as much as possible. In fact, that was quite simpler than I thought it was gonna be. Everything went into place really nicely. 
Now I'm going to use my gauge again just to see that I have contact with the piece the whole way. Okay, this is a little high, really high actually, so I'm going to... So it's good, and I still have to drop this back a little bit more, but I'm pleased with that. And now as a quick test to see how we're doing, before everything is hardened up, I'm just gonna set this right there on the groove, and I am satisfied with that. That lines up really well. This looks good to me. So now this is gonna dry, and then later we're gonna do the second one. All right, so this is our back rail, and it's actually quite a bit thicker than the front rail. And that's because it's structural and it doesn't need to accommodate doors, of course. And that means then, of course, we can't measure down from the top. We have to measure up from the bottom. So what I did is, using my gauge on this piece here, I measured up from the bottom, took my line. That's my measurement. And we're going to do the same thing, only measuring up from the bottom. And because I've got this groove, rather than clamping in the vise to do it, I'm going to actually just clamp it between my wagon vise and a bench dog. I don't want to risk breaking off my, um, my groove there. And this should be pretty close if we stand it up next to it. Get an idea of how close we are. Yep. Same thing, glue it on there. I'm going to be putting a cross brace here that will be mortised into the front and back rails. So I've got it positioned and clamped over exactly where I want it. I marked center underneath and I marked the center line here and lined them up. And now I'm just going to mark with my marking knife. Each pass I'm pushing a little bit more. The first pass is really quite light. Oh, it just shifted. I felt it. There we go. And as you can see, I've got a center line there, which fit on that center line right there. The piece should go right like that. That's great, that's a great fit. Then I'm gonna remove this. I'll saw this away and then remove it with the chisel. And I've got it, I'll take it down to depth and this will be a little bit proud. I've got the dogs up here and I've moved to the other side of my bench and I'm just going to saw against it, against all the dogs like this.
All right, look at that. Doesn't fit, which is what we want. All right, I'm gonna take my uh, pin, my router plane and get this down to depth, and then I'm gonna start fitting this. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna start fitting the actual piece in the middle. All right, so this is close, but not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is take a shaving off the side and go from there. I'm also going to taper it a little bit towards the bottom, so I'm going to put a little bit of a taper like that. All right, so here's how it turned out. It just drops in just barely. It really has almost no, has like the slightest little bit of lateral movement, which is what I was hoping for. It's very, very snug without being hard to get in and out. It looks great. The gap on either side looks perfect and uh, even. So when I put this in, it'll this piece can move a little bit on its own. The whole thing can move. It's not going to get glued. And it's just going to, these are going to get secured into the front and back rails. So this will hopefully mitigate some of the warpage that can occur with the panel. I'll do the same on both ends as well, putting a piece to brace over top of it and still allow it to move and do what it wants to do. So I hope with a, with three right there, it'll allow this big panel to do what it wants to do while still holding it in check. That's, oh gosh, that is amazing. I'm loving this. This, oh wow. The shelf seems to fit perfectly. Look at that, oh, flush, really nice. I can't even tell you how excited I am right now. This is great. This, I think that that's actually gonna look kinda cool. Like it's two separate panels, it's not, I just think this looks great as it is. I was worried about all this uh, sap wood in the front, but it actually kind of blends in. And all I can say at this point is, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and it looks bright. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching and see you around for the next one.